Angel Tree. Wasn't that stunning? Welcome on stage, Ted Sarandos. CEO, CEO of Netflix and filmmaker, director, producer, screenwriter and music director Sanjay Leela Bansali in the house! <laughs> I can see we've started uh, the morning in a fervor and a frenzy, thanks to the first look of your wonderful creation. Both of you are the creators. And I can see we've just about begun. Ted, welcome back to India. Thrilled, thrilled to be <laughs> today. It's amazing. So what is, it the, what is the first thing you do whenever you have, uh, you know, whenever you come to India on a short visit? Eat. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's a man after my heart. All right. All right, let's get started. Um, you know, Indian storytelling is what this, uh, you know, morning and afternoon is about. And it, we're having quite the global moment at the moment with uh, Indian creators and Indian storytellers being loved, discovered all across the world. So what is it that you define as great storytelling? Uh, Ted, I'd love to know that. And what is it that makes you sit up and say, this is it. This is what I'm betting on. You know, it's funny. It's different for every kind of thing you watch, obviously. But for me, it is a lot of it's, do I care about these people? Am I interested in this world? Do I want to see what happens to them? <laughs> uh, and I think that's something you kind of establish early and figure out early as you're, when you're going to do a project. Uh, that's the first question I think you kind of have to answer, uh, which I think uh, Hermande obviously answers all those questions. Yes, yes, and yes. Ticks all the boxes, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you know, uh, Sanjay, I just want to ask you, you know, Indian content is also, Indian storytelling is also on a precipice of sorts. Um, how so do you... So are Indian clothes. So are so Indian clothes. <laughs> <laughs> to the van of born, absolutely. <laughs> so what, what would be really interesting to know is how you decode and how you understand the audience's, you know, tastes changing today. What do you think has changed about the Indian audiences and their preferences? Okay, first I'll answer the question you haven't asked. Which is? Which is, namaste Ted. Oh. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it's an honor and pleasure to sit with a person with um, such a vision and um, such a great producer and giving platform to such wonderful work that filmmakers create. So you are very, very important to the whole world of cinema right now. So thank you for being here. And, kind of you, sir. and all my, my beautiful people who have worked with me are here. Uh, I think they want to see me go through the grind. All that they go through, <laughs> all that I make them go through every day, they want to see me uh, trapped in this, trying to answer questions, difficult ones. And but um, We gave him a day off, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Done, you're on, Sonakshi. And then I have this wonderful um, Netflix team, Monica and Tanya here. Woo! And, uh, Let's hear all it from Monica. But the most important person in my life is my CEO, Prerna Singh. Aww. She... She's very special, she's like a pillar, so she's made this happen. Uh, she'll handle Monica and Netflix, you know, they are monstrous, they are very difficult to handle. Handled Monica, so, we will have a separate debate so, on that. Yeah, so if you feel that, you know, you've got a Netflix series and all, you have to be ready to go through the grind because they are very demanding and they are... <laughs> So, but she has been very, very important. All my team that is here, Arvinder, Ashna, I need to mention all of them. Chetan, who's my very favorite, Utkarsh, oh. Amit, all of them. My art directors, those great Subroto and Amit who've done great art and production design. So it's wonderful uh, to, to be here with all of you all and I celebrate this moment that is so, so very special because we worked hard, we've gone through the grind, we've sweated it out, we've all fought amongst ourselves. We've all done. <laughs> All sorts of things. So anyway, now that this answer is over... Um, Can I repeat the question? Yeah, please. <laughs> no, you had, what was the question? <laughs> no, I, I basically want to, uh, you know, wanted to ask you uh, how you decode um, the, tr the trends and audience tastes and perceptions. And do you think we have changed as an audience? You know, any filmmaker who says he knows the audience is living in a fool's paradise. You never know the audience. They are everything to you. 
they mean they, you are here because of the audience. English mean Hindi me kehte na my baap hai audience. We can't translate that for you in English to say audience my baap hai kaise bol. Mother father of. So the audience is everything to us, and to understand how they are changing, impossible. Millions of people, millions of people who watch films, you can't. The filmmaker has to understand himself. He is the one who should be able to do work that the audience doesn't expect, that the audience doesn't um, feel that he's seen it before. They want something new, and then the filmmaker is the one who goes and changes the audience. I feel it's that's the way a filmmaker should believe in what he's doing, rather than worry about uh, what they want this, they want this. Then it's mathematics. Then you're setting up a project. Then I think the distributor will want this. The ex exhibition sector will want this. The studio will want this. How do you put all these thoughts together? You just make a film that comes to your heart. You instinctively go ahead and make it, whether people like it or not. You have to be fearless. And if it does well, you feel very happy. If it doesn't do well, you, are you go into depression, which is good, because you get up and then again rise and make another film. But never try and understand the audience. Yes, everything has changed. Post-COVID, everything has changed. I don't know what people want. They want a spectacular film for the theater. They want very, very unusual, out-of-the-box content for the OTT platforms. So they demand us really, I mean, the, the demand of quality that they want from the filmmaker. If the filmmaker is now on high alert and he's on guard because he has to now work very hard to give a new treatment, a new subject, nuances. He demands more of the actors. Everybody has to come together and make a, a, a project. You know, people told me, Gangubai, you should not make because it's a... It's a woman-centric film. It's a female protagonist. In India, they do not go to a female um, um, subject. I mean, the box office has always never worked. And everything that, and then she's playing a sex worker, and then there is no hero. All the tick marks that you Stacked would have otherwise him. put to understand the audience that you're asking and to understand what the whole scenario is all about. Um, then I have ticked all the wrong boxes because, but it worked. I mean, that's the belief. That's what all the content that they're doing, The Crown and all those fabulous series that you make, they're all shockingly different. We've never seen something like this before. So the idea is the filmmaker has to believe. He has to cause the change. Let the audience not change you. Okay, so we put the, rightfully the horse before the cart and not the other way around. Yeah, and I would say that that concentration on the audience is why I love working with Sanjay. I think his, and I, why his work is so amazing, because I think it is one of those things where it's easy to lose track of who you're doing this for and what you're doing it for, but you've always been very clear this is for the audience. Now, you may not understand exactly what they want, but what they want, I always feel like when people go into a movie, however they watch it, wherever they watch it, they want to, one of two things, either to escape or connect. Uh, and your work always beautifully does both, which I think is great. I have a mini audience in my office. Okay. I'm, not your, I'm not taking your name. I'm not just taking say it your once name. because we have a code. <laughs> I have a small audience in my office who I keep showing my footage to and testing. What are they, what are, how are they reacting? Different kinds of different age groups. So that is my test of also how the audience is going to react. By the end of it, you make a film or make a series only for it to be seen. That is your victory. And therefore, you give your best to them. But do not calculate. Do not... Uh, just give them what comes to your heart and they will take it, you know, so that is very important. So then let me ask the calculative question to you, Ted, because I really do need answers here. You know, <laughs> let me, you know, so Netflix content has diversified across formats. We've seen you do series, we've seen you do films, uh, unscripted, interactive, live, and now even gaming. So what I really need to understand is how do you see your audience's appetite changing and is this in response to that? And, uh, you know, especially when you keep in mind some of the innovative forms of storytelling that Netflix is placing its bets on, uh, do you take into account the audience's uh, appetite or do you also just create and... No, it's all we think about. I mean, our, our entire business is built on pleasing the audience. Uh, if they like what they watch, they watch more and they don't go anywhere and they tell their friends and... And I think our opportunity, it's a big, it feels like a responsibility as much as an opportunity uh, to, to make audiences happy, trying to give them the things that they want. And the thing that they want is not always the same thing depending on what mood they're in, depending on who's in the house, depending on who they're watching with. Um, and I think the thing that's evolved the most, and I don't know if it's necessarily COVID generator or whatever, uh, but watching a movie at home is a different experience than seeing in a movie with, in the theater. And understanding that, going into it and saying, what is the movie that I'm gonna make for the audience who's in the state to watch at home right now? So, meaning they're a little more distracted, they're, 
you know, they're, they're more likely to be in control of the situation than they are in the theater where they're more willing to surrender. And that does affect how you tell a story. It does affect how movies evolve over time when they see movies like that. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's just the meeting the audience where they are is always the challenge of a filmmaker and a film distributor uh, and a network to try to make people understand, you know, uh, content that's suited to the viewing experience. Which is what makes important. you both such a potent combination, right? You're thinking about where the audience is going and he's just thinking about what's coming out of his heart and we have magic <laughs> coming out of you right, guys. Right, yeah, right. absolutely. In many ways, it's true. Yep. Right? And I think what you say about you know, the, the projects that come out, we make in, in India, last year we had 28 uh, original projects in India, uh, 100 so far since we've launched in India. And the diversity of the projects, I think, is what's been you know, really thrilling. Last year, we had this uh, incredible success um, around the world with, with Gungobai, which is, I live in Los Angeles, and this is that time of year when people are talking about awards. And because people had seen Gungobai on Netflix in LA, they, when they saw the conversation coming around about it, they're like, oh, I saw that on Netflix. You won't believe it. You have to see it. Uh, and that, that whole ability to reach audience around the world is incredibly exciting. But it wasn't just that. We also had, you know, uh, Monaco, My Darling, and Darlings, uh, Kake. Like, these projects really were enormous in India and traveled around the world, which is a really exciting time to be telling stories. Yeah, well, we were talking about placing bets on different forms of storytelling. It would be remiss for, you, for me not to ask you about the big bets that you always take in your storytelling. You, you know, you, you create unique spaces and, I mean, your entire team is here. It would be silly of me to try and recreate that. But um, I want to know how it was for you to shift from the big screen to the digital space. I mean, did it influence your process in any way or do you follow the same process for your films and your series? We should ask you. We should ask you. <laughs> I've made big films. I enjoy. 